There's a lot of information out there that either way oversimplifies DMARC or way overcomplexifies it. I'm aiming in this video to show you the real process that you need to go through to set up DMARC. Here we go. All right, let me walk through this process with you. Now remember, again, big picture, the goal is simple. Keep your eye on the prize. We need to set up SPF and DKIM for all of our vendors, then flip DMARC over to reject to eliminate any other source of sending emails on behalf of our domain. That's the whole goal of DMARC. Stop phishing, stop impersonation, right? So the challenge that you're gonna have in your real world business is who are the vendors? This is the number one challenge that everybody has with DMARC. Everybody being everybody that has a domain for any amount of time. Because over years and years and years of domains existing, many departments in the organization, especially large organizations, have found their own vendors. So IT, completely divorced from that selection process, is pretty much just getting messages from other departments saying, hey, can you add this to the DNS header? We chose a vendor. And they're, they're like, oh, okay. And so years of that has happened. And those vendors have come and those vendors have gone. And all the records, all the SPF records, the DKIM records, they're all out of date. They're all a mess. We don't even know who the vendors are any more, right? And this is why IT people are like, I'm not touching this, right? That's been the challenge is IT folk are like, I'm not flipping on DMARC equals reject. And then the CEO's pet project gets sent to everybody's spam inbox. And I get, I get my job lost, right? Because I was trying to secure our email and I didn't even know that the CEO had this vendor over here or that, that, you know, fill, fill in the scenario, right? You get what I'm trying to say. So, so there's a real process that we can use to discover that. And it all starts with DMARC discovery or what I would call reporting. I'm going to show you how to set this up in a, one of the subsequent videos, but, but right now it starts off with you and I going in and setting up DMARC to just gather data. We're not changing policy. We're not blocking vendors. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're just saying, I want to see who is sending on behalf of this domain. And you let that run for 30 to 60 days. Why do you think we do that? That's a one to two month cycle. Usually, I mean, you might say, oh, I monitored for a week. Well, that's great. But what if the newsletter blast goes out every third week, right? You don't know the email trends right now of your organization if you haven't done DMARC before. So turn it on and start discovering what those are. When do we see these big blasts going out? Where are they coming from? What? I, I see this vendor sending on behalf of our domain and that <laughs> there becomes your, your, your joy right? <laughs> in this process is like, okay, I see 15 vendors sending on behalf of our domain that I gathered in those 30 to 60, sec 30 to 60 days, right? Who are those? And yes, a lot of times that means IT is now sending an email to the leaders of the different departments in an organization being like, here's a list of the vendors that we have sending email on your behalf. Is any of these yours? Please take responsibility for your vendors that are sending using our domain because we need to secure them, right? And I'm sure there's some, some uh, email logic that you can put, you know, some, some verbiage that you can use that, that sounds really good, right? Now, some of the challenges when you're doing this in this discovery reporting process, sometimes the vendor is using a third party. Like, let's just say there's a vendor using AWS to send email on your behalf, right? Now you're a needle in a haystack sometimes. You're like, uh, and so, so sometimes it, it's going to take a little longer to try and discover where those are, or you might start going with the date. And I, I don't mean to dive too far into this, but this is the major prohibitor. Like this is it that keeps DMARC from taking over the world is because you're like, I just saw we sent 200,000 emails on the 10th of July. Nobody knows who did that, right? And so the email may sound like, let me show you the graph. I saw 200,000 emails go out on the 10th of July. What? I mean, somebody did that, right? What department, I, I, it came from AWS, what department sent 200,000, right? This is the trickiness of, of uh, DMARC. So that's the first thing, we do our discovery process. Then we modify or create a new SPF record. Now remember, the SPF record is a list of all the email servers that are allowed to, to relay on behalf of your domain. Most uh, domains have that. 
It's, it's just part of as, as time goes on. But the challenge is everybody forgets to remove them when we're no longer using that vendor, right? We remember to add them, but we forget to remove them. So your job yeah. as you go through is to add the active ones and eliminate the inactive because there's a limit of 10. I'm not gonna dive too deep into that right now. It's, it's not technically a limit. Uh, it's 10 domain names can be listed in the S SPF header. I'm pointing at this paper, but uh, you're seeing my face. 10 domain names. So in your SPF header, so you've got SPF equals, and, and you, you've got you know server one, comma, server two, comma, server three, comma, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, there's a list of 10 DNS names in here. There's unlimited IP addresses, and that's led to something called SPF flattening, uh, which is a bad practice, but I'm not even gonna get into that right now. Um, just, just for now, keep in mind, it's you, you create your SPF rate. I'm just going through the process, right? Then you add DKIM to the vendor. So every one of these vendors that ended up in your SPF record, you should add DKIM to it, assuming they support it. Most email vendors do at this place. So think of it, think of it this way you're configuring DMARC. SPF is like, okay, you pass level one. It's kind of a weak level, like you made it in. Because SPF records, and I'll talk about those in another video if I haven't already, um, the, the SPF record is kind of a weak way of identity. You're like, yeah, it's that group of servers over there, right? Those servers could be thousands of them. Uh, DKIM is like, okay, chunk, you're down to level two. That's a more secure way because you actually go to that vendor, you're like, that vendor is going to put a stamp on every email that they send that says, I'm approved. And every email server that receives from that vendor is going to verify that stamp is accurate with our DNS uh, configuration, right? So DKIM, SPF is good, but often not enough. DKIM is very good and will often up the email reputation of that vendor sub substantially. Then... You monitor again, and I'm saying maybe. Um, you know, before you want to flip that flag on DMARC equals reject, again, we're back to number one. You might have missed something. Maybe you missed, maybe, you know, every once every three months they sent an email blast out using some vendor, right? So you might just want to glance again and go, uh, okay, or, you know, pick your time based on what you know about your company and how often you're sending email. Final step then is to configure DMARC equals reject. As soon as you've done that, now only the servers listed in the SPF and only the servers with DKIM configured are allowed to relay on behalf of your domain. Everything else is blocked. Your email reputation goes through the roof. You have fantastic email reputation. Um, and now DMARC is configured for your domain. That's, that's what we'll call it the five step Jeremy process that isn't too complex, but also isn't too simple, right? Hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for being here.